At this point, I have my breadboards down on a backboard. I've got a centralized bus board that I'm going to use. I've put in all of the pin headers. I have my LED bar graphs to show me the values of address and uh, data. I have my Arduino logger mounted in the upper right. I do have the processor and an updated board that includes additional power and grounds. I am waiting on an updated hat since I had uh, some trace issues, uh, basically my design of the previous hat that goes to this, but I'll add that later. Uh, no, no rush on that. Uh, I do have a placeholder up here for an updated clock and reset and power distribution board. Uh, for now, I will use my existing uh, boards. I have a power distribution and a clock reset board that I'll use uh, temporarily until that new board is ready to go. And I have laid out all of the chips uh, that I am going to be using. And so as I walk through these chips, what I have down so far is the 286 uh, processor itself. I have a clock generator. I have a bus controller. I have my interrupt controller, math coprocessor. I have four latches that I'm going to use. Uh, these three will be for address. This will be for some control signals. I have a pair of transceivers for the data lines. I have my PSOC that's going to do address decode logic for the time being. Uh, down to the lower right, I have my ROM, I have my RAM, and then I have a pair of programmable peripheral interfaces or PPIs. Uh, one of those is going to be for a PS2 keyboard input right here, and the other will be for an LCD output. And so my intention is to really get these latches and transceivers all coming in to this location on this uh, distribution board for the bus. And then from there, I'll connect up the ROM, the RAM, uh, the PPIs, and the Arduino. And I've got one here that I don't know if I'll use or not, but it's there if I need some additional connections into that bus. And that should be adequate for what I'm doing for the time being. Uh, so really to get me started, I do have all the chips laid out. I have connected power to each of them. Uh, in the case of the processor, I've actually got five power lines coming in uh, and five ground lines. You know, really I've only got two, well, actually I've got four pins coming up here uh, for power, I got four pins for ground, four pins for power, four pins for ground on each of these rails. So um, should have a pretty solid connection as far as power. Again, I'm using these uh, PCBs to distribute. This is a single piece PCB that distributes power. Uh, this up here will connect into the power distribution board. And I'm just using for now a 22 gauge that comes into this and distributes out, but that should be more than adequate. Usually my concerns are more with the pins on the, the breadboards than anything. Uh, so I will uh, get the, the power distributed that way. You will also notice that I have put a pair of caps or capacitors at each of the power connections. And so I have a 0.1 and a 0.01 microfarad in every power location. Um, might not be entirely necessary, but uh, I found that that's helpful to have have those two there. And on the rails, I have some electrolytic capacitors. Those are just simply 10 microfarads, so every rail should have its own 10 microfarad capacitor. So should be good for power distribution. I think I'll be okay with signal distribution coming out of the transceivers and latches. And step one really is to pull up my schematic and start connecting up this processor. So if I go to my schematic, this is my current drawing that I have here. And I'm going to start up here in the upper left with the 8286 processor. And these are the signals that I'm connecting to. Now I do also have this adapter that I'm using, so I could pull that up for a second if I want to look at that. But essentially that's just fanning out my connections, and I do have these labeled on the PCB. So I've got all my address lines that are going to be at the bottom here, all the way up to this pin. I do have some grounds down here. I have some 
power connections up here. Uh, ignore the top part, that's the hat that will get put on later. Uh, I've then also got all of these other uh, reset, BHE, S1, S0, etc. All of these are labeled and I'm now going to start connecting those. And you can see that many of those do require a resistor and the size of this resistor changes depending on the speed at which I'm going to run the processor. But for now, I'm just going to place in some 620 ohm approximate uh, resistor values. And uh, I'll have some signals coming from other chips here. But let me maybe just start with uh, making sure I've got my VCC and grounds taken care of. Uh, but now let me go ahead and get uh, these resistors put in place. So the actual resistors that I'm going to be using here are 560 ohm. I just happen to have these. Uh, handy and if I recall correctly as the frequency goes up the resistor values need to come down so I think I'll be fine with uh, 560 ohms here so that's what I am going to go with I of course I can adjust that later if I need to Okay, at this point, I have come in here and I have pulled the lines for error and busy high. Uh, those are an active low, so I'm going to pull them the opposite direction. And then I have pulled down, hold, PEREQ, NMI, and INTR. So those are active highs, so I've pulled them down to ground. So I now have those six signals connected. Okay, next I am gonna step back and go up to my clock generator and start getting this connected. And as I look at this, this uh, ARDY, SRDY, SRDYEN, I'm gonna pull all three of those down to ground. And so that's pins one, two, and three all need to be pulled down. Okay, pins one, two, and three are pulled down. And then my ready line needs to be pulled up. And I'm going to use again one of these same resistor values that I was using previously. So 560 four line number four pin number four and that needs to be pulled up line five will be a clock in which i don't have my clock card up there yet but i'm just going to make a note that that will be my clock in uh, line six i am going to go ahead and pull up and actually just tie that to high at the moment. Nothing else will be uh, connecting to that for now. Whereas with ready, there are other things that'll connect to it. Hence, I need the pull up so that I don't have a short later if a different chip throws something on that line. Uh, but FC, I'm gonna go ahead and tie high. And then I've already got my ground connection on my Clock out is going to come out right up here, but I want to put a small resistor in line somewhere between 10 and 74. So I'm going to just grab something in the middle of that, maybe a 40-ish. So I'm going to grab a 47 ohm to put on that clock line for now. And then at that point, this should be my clock line that'll go to the rest of my circuit. And we'll come back to that in just a bit. And then I'm gonna have a reset and an active low reset. I'm gonna leave those disconnected for now. I'm not going to connect the next two pins and then the next two I'm going to leave disconnected and then 18 and 17 need to be high. So 18 is my VCC. I've already got that. And then pin 17 I'm pulling high. So I need to get that connected high. 
Okay, so now I'm going to come back to my clock and get that connected up to my processor. And on my processor, that is line 31. And in my and on here, I've got line 31 coming down to pin 3. So I need to run from there down to here. Okay, so I now have my clock out of this clock generator through a small resistor coming down into my clock in for my processor. A line 11... So we've got uh, 10 is my clock, line 11 is my reset that's incoming. And that is going to come from my reset card. So maybe for now I will just flag that. And so this will need to come from my reset card. So I'll have clock and reset. And then the reset that goes to the rest of my circuit is the next pin over. So pin 12, and I can run that down to the reset of my processor. And my processor, the reset is right here. So let me get this connected up. Okay, reset is now connected for my circuit. So next I need to connect S1 and S0 from my processor into my clock generator. And so that would be pins 15 and 16 up here down to right here on my processor. Okay, so we now have S1 and S0 connected up. The next two pins here we're not using, so that was a no connection and a P clock or processor clock, I believe it is, which is half of the incoming clock, and I'm not using that for the time being. And to double check, we down here have X1, X2, which are pins 7 and 8, which would be for a crystal if I was going to use that, but I am not. I am instead going to use, uh, based on what I have on pin 6, I am telling it to use my clock in coming in pin 5. And that again is going to go to this card up here, or the previous version of it. So just have these two to connect, and we should be good as far as the clock generator is concerned. So clock generator is connected, necessary pins on my processor here. I think I now will slide over to my bus controller. And take a look at what we've got there. So if I look at my bus controller, as far as inputs are concerned, and I can pull that data sheet up. Okay, so we have to pull system clock in, and system clock is going to come into pin 2. Okay, next we need S0 and S1 coming in. And that is going to be into pins 19 and 3, respectively. And so I can either grab those from here and bring them up, or I can come up here and grab them from pins 15 and 16. So I think I'm going to grab them up here and bring them down and over. I guess it doesn't matter. Maybe this would be just as easy down here. S0 needs to go over to pin 19. And actually, I think I'm going to try to keep more space around this open, so I'm going to pull it from up here. So S0 is on pin 15. And then if I get S1, I need to be down at pin 3. The next is MIO as an input. And if I look for MIO, that is down here my processor and so I need to connect up pin 18 up here on the bus controller down to MIO now my processor MIO is right back over here next there's multi bus mode select and in my case, 
as I look at that, multi bus mode select MB is pin six, and I am going to take MB to ground because I'm not going to use multi bus. For MB, I have command enable latch CENL, which is an input. CENL is pin 15, uh, sorry, pin 14. And in mine, I am going to go ahead and take pin 14 high. So if I look at that, pin 14 high, active high input, latched internally to the end, used to select the appropriate bus controller for each type. This input may be connected to VCC to select this 288 for all transfers. This is my only bus controller, so that is being pulled high. So pin 14 to high. Then CMDLY, and in my case, I am taking that to ground. And taking it to ground, there are no delays required before starting a command. So that's where I'm starting. That may have to change later, but I am going to start by taking that pin low. And so that is pin 7 that needs to go to ground. Next is ready. And ready is pin one. And for me, pin one is gonna to connect to the ready signal. And that ready signal, let's go trace that back. I've got to my clock generator. And also it goes to my processor. So let's double check. Uh, pin four, I've got the tie high, but I need to connect that both to the processor <coughs> and over here. So let me go ahead and do that. So. Pin four, ready, and my ready is here, so I need to connect pin four here to here, and then also connect it over to pin one here. So those are the three that I need to get connected. Ready connected there, and now I need to also take it over to pin one over here. We have ready at pin one is connected into my ready signal. Uh, next, I get to CEN, AEN. And as I look at that, that is pin 15. And for me, pin 15, I am going to go ahead and tie that to VCC. And if we look at that, uh, this looks like it's for a shared bus and the bus controller command outputs. And in case that the CPU does not have control, if AEN. So in our case, I am going to try this with, we've got MB low, and then I'm also going to tie CEN high, because if it's low, it forces it, uh, this DEN output's inactive, but does not tri-state them. So I think I want to go high. And so when MB is low, it's an active high, and that allows the bus controller to activate its command and den outputs, which I believe is what I want at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up high. And so pin 15, I need to bring up high. And then we have outputs. And so we'll have outputs for ALE, MCE, DEN, DTR, etc. I'm going to have to connect my data and address lines. Uh, data, these will go to these transceivers, and the address are going to go to these latches down here. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of lines coming down. I'll come to that later. Initially, I am not going to hook up the interrupt controller. What I want to get connected are these, along with my transceivers and latches and then get that connected into the bus so I can actually see, uh, check this out and see if I'm getting the normal reset that I would expect uh, coming out of the processor. So next, if I take a look at these data transceivers right here, that would be this on my schematic. I've already connected the power and the grounds. And then I need to connect uh, DTR to pin one. And DTR 
is coming out of my bus controller. So pin 17 out of the bus controller up here into both of these pin ones. So let me go ahead and get that connected. I think I'll bring that down to right here and then I'll hop it across here. And then I'm gonna have to connect up my data lines coming in down here and I'll have my bus output up here. The other thing I have is the DEN signal. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that. And that's going to go to output enable, pin 19. And DEN is going to come from pin 16 up here. So I got to come from pin 16 here down to pin 19. <laughs> I'm going to come back to the data and data bus lines. Uh, the data bus lines are going to connect over to this far right connector actually right here. So I'll end up running from here to here. But I'm going to use uh, some little PCB adapters to just make sure I've got a connection uh, for that. And then the same for data here into here. I'm going to use a little PCB to help make that a stronger connection. And actually, as I do that, I might want to move this other line down and out of the way a bit. So then if I take a look at my latches at the bottom, I have my powers and grounds connected already. I then have an output enable pin one and all of those are going to get tied to ground. So I can go ahead and do that. So pin one needs to go to ground on all of those. Okay, then pin 11. This is a 20 pin. So pin 11, those all need to go to the ALE signal. And that ALE is coming out of my bus controller. So pin 5 I need to bring down here. And that is going to go ahead and connect into pin 11. So the far right pin needs to come up here to pin 5. Okay, and I want to get that all the way down here. And try to do that in a way that doesn't obstruct too much stuff. So I might just come down and over and around here. I think I'm going to shift this one over just one spot. And now I can tie those pin 11s together. And I'd really like to keep these pretty clear. So I think I'm going to somewhat bring this up a little bit higher. OK, that should work. Now I have a clear path to get to those signals, which will be my address, my latched addresses that will go over here. OK, so I need to run a bunch of lines here, 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 and here. And that's probably the next thing I'll do. I'm going to hold off on connecting any of this other stuff for the time being. And just to see if that much I get the proper reset coming out of this. And if that looks right, then I can then move on to getting this connected. So my RAM and try to get some basic test program loaded. Uh, maybe just to cycle through some values so that I know that something's uh, being read correctly here.